what's up everybody welcome back to my channel i get this super cute and creative grinch set for y'all i do grinch nails every single year and i'm just so obsessed with them it is my favorite christmas movie ever so i was super psyched about these but first i need y'all to go ahead like comment subscribe show whatever support you can turn that bell on so that y'all know when i'm uploading because i got some cute holiday sets for y'all and this actually was acrylic an acrylic redesign so y'all gonna learn how to do that today as well but yeah like can you believe that this set went from this to that cute grinch set like that looked like a set right off you know like a fresh set so this set was actually three weeks old this day and it was no lifting at all so basically for an acrylic redesign my first step is i'm just going in with my nail drill and this is a 2x course um drill bit it's in my amazon link in the description down below if you want to get that and i'm just going through taking all of the acrylic down and then going through lightly and fast like very I don't know how to explain the motion but like very light and quick along the um area of like where the cuticle part i guess would be to get any small lifting that might be there and you could tell the difference between the lifting because it's going to be a lighter color like it's gonna be like a whitish color so you're gonna be able to tell that that part is lifting and you just want to go through and you do not want to touch the natural nail with this, okay? Do not. You want to stay on the acrylic part and just lightly go over until it flakes off. And so, yeah, we're just going to go through and take all of the colors down. And then I'll show you, obviously, the next steps. It ends up being so much dust when I do this. Like, it's crazy. And obviously, well, the next step we go on in to push the cuticles back. But, and my drill begins, like, hot when I do that. But I'm surprised my drill hasn't crashed on me. Because I've had that for about two years now. And that drill, you can find in my Amazon link as well if you want to check that out. Um, and then I'm just going in to clean up the shape. We keep in the same shape and the same length. So, that's good going up cleaning up the shape and then you do want to be gentle because they are really thin so they're super weak right now it's basically like having tips on so you want to be careful and then we do go over i know it looks like i'm being rough but i'm not this is just in fast motion but then i go over the natural nail that's um that's you know open that you can see to get any oils or anything off and then we're gonna do that on all of the nail beds and all the nails whatever but the thing about my drill is it doesn't i know some texts will go over the nail bed with a sanding band instead of going over with a hand file i don't do that and i don't think my drill is okay with that like because it's like that's my toaster oven i'm cooking <laughs> um but it's like um dang i lost my train of thought 
my drill it's just very like jittery when it's on a slow motion so i don't know how that would be if you're that nail tech that works with that um but if you don't like me how you you know get the natural oils off with a hand file instead of the e-file i would highly suggest that um e-file that drill because it's amazing it's really been amazing hasn't crashed on me it's been two years since i've been using it so yeah and if you can't get it online you can find it at the sally's store but it is like way more expensive at sally's than i found it on amazon so i would recommend staying with amazon once we're done cleaning up the shape i do go back in with my cuticle drill bit and um this is basically just to make sure there's no more no cuticle because especially with the filling the cuticle can grow out and then it's a little difficult to get in those areas when you're doing a filling so i like to just go in with my cuticle drill bit just to make sure nothing is on the nail beds because dry or dead skin can cause lifting if it's left on there and it just goes through helps with any more lifting on the actual nail and helps get any other oils or anything out as well and then i'm just going in obviously brushed all the dust off went in with my dehydrator and i did actually see a little bit more that was lifted on this nail so i went in with my tweezers you want to be careful with your tweezers because if you pull too hard it can cause even more lifting so i went in and just got that little bit off and used my drill and just got it off because if you let me explain this if you go and it, do the filling when there's still lifting on the nail that can cause a greenie because moisture can get trapped under that um lifted spot under the nail and that can cause the infection with the moisture just sitting there so you want to be careful and want to make sure there's no lifting at all and then we going in with my no lift nails primer and just putting that on twice and then i'm going in my crystal clear from valentino and I'm using my C&D retention liquid and I'm just going in and putting a very thin layer like I would any regular set um, of the clear. And we're doing this to prevent lifting. We want to do it right away so that we get in the primer at its best so that the primer works the best, you know, when it's attaching to the um, acrylic. And then you want to protect the nail from any pigments we're using and crystal clear is going to be the strongest pigment so that's going to help with no lifting as well because we're using the strongest um powder so that's that i hope i'm being very informative for y'all <laughs> um and then i'm just going in because one nail is going to be clear on both hands i did jump back and forth between both hands because I didn't want to keep jumping back before back and forth between different colored acrylics with my brush so whatever had to be clear i did first whatever had to be nude i did and then whatever had to be pink i did so um going in you know regular application obviously and then we'll go in with my perfect nude from valentino and this is going to be i'm actually this finger is the only finger that's going to be a french tip so i'm just going in and you know obviously creating the french tip i don't file my french tips i just shape them with my brush as good as i can and that's that i make them a little bit thicker so that after i add the color and i'm filing the apex can be there instead of having to encapsulate it with clear so yeah i don't it's too much work to go in there because i'm working with powder and monomer you know wet beads and then you got to go in to file it and that creates all this dust and then you gotta wipe the dust off and add more wetness and it's it's just too much back and forth so i don't like doing all that filing 
um with practice with this you know my french tips have been very nice and good i mean i want to say they absolutely perfect but i don't think really nobody's is for real you know but it's possible without doing all that filing and then the other two fingers one is going to be the grinch face and the other one's going to be plaid so we're just going in to do our regular application on those two fingers as well Then I'm going in with this pink acrylic from Valentino, which is number 114. And we're just applying this to all the other fingers that needs to be pink because we're going to have a pink sweater nail and a pink chrome nail. So that's that. We're going to put it on this finger and the thumb. And with the different color like acrylics, when you're doing acrylic redesign, like on that middle finger, you can see how the green is underneath. Just try to get as much as you can off if you can't get all of it off then just make sure you're not doing too light of a color where you're gonna see that bottom color through that top color if that makes sense and i just like to um do that and then i'll file more of the bottom off so that you can't see that color as much but yeah that's really the only like dilemma with acrylic redesigns because you're gonna have that color seek it through the bottom but it just gives you a little bit of a limit of what colors you can use next but it's still possible So then we just going into file and I have plenty of videos um, about filing. This video is more teaching you about other stuff like acrylic redesign and the painting. So I'm not going to talk too much about um, filing. If you do want to learn about filing, a few of my recent videos, I explained a little bit more. And I do have a video strictly on um, how to shape and that's in the description box below if you want to go check that out. But other than that, I'm basically just going to let y'all watch this part of me filing.
So then obviously when we're done filing, I have the client wash her hands and then we get into the design. So I'm just going through with a pencil and drawing the design first. It was this random picture that she, you know, showed me or whatever that we found. And I'm just drawing basically the Grinch face and whatever, whatever, you know. And then the same thing for the middle finger. It is so cute. I'm so happy I decided to do like the middle finger with the little bow because I've seen that going around too and that was really cute. So I decided to put that in there as well. And then we just came up with a few different designs just to throw in there. Well, she kind of just let me freestyle. So I kind of just, you know, put some stuff in there. But yes, I'm just drawing and then um, we'll get into the painting. So I'm getting in with this green. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know what color polishes these are. So I'm not even going to try to mention them. But I, yeah, we're just going right over it. And when I, I like to go over it. Sometimes you can see the drawing oh, like through the polish. Um, but sometimes you can't. And to me, that's okay. Because when I drew it, it just helps me picture what should be where on the nail. And I keep that in my mind for when I go over like this part you can't really I couldn't really see it underneath so I just had to you know kind of mesmerize memorize what is where if that makes sense and just go based off of that and yeah so I'm just going from hand to hand basically with the same the same with the acrylic like if I'm using this one color I'm gonna finish whatever I gotta do with this one color you know so I just went in with all of the green wherever the green has to go and then I went in with the pink instead of the white because the white is going to be in between, like, especially for the Santa hat, the white is going to be in between the green and the pink. So I figured, let me do the green and the pink first and then put the white over top. And that'll be much easier. So next, I'm going to be going in with this little pink from OPI. And I'm going to be doing, like, just the Santa hat, the body, and the bow. And then... I'll get to whatever so this actually let me talk about this brush I'm using the set of brush I'm using is actually in the Amazon link in my description box as well and it's just like a set of brushes this is the bigger a little bit bigger brush um, but it does come with an even tinier brush which I use for details and I personally actually even cut some of the Brussels off of that brush to make it even smaller so I can work with even better detail and it actually helps a lot like that's my favorite detail brush and it's just so tiny and so helpful and yeah I'm actually using acetone you want to use acetone obviously to clean your brush throughout all of this um I am for the white I am going to be using my acrylic paint which I got from Michaels um you are supposed to use water when you clean it but I was like doing too much. I only had three hours exactly to do this set because I had another client coming right after her. So I was like, work smarter, not harder. That's just what I kept repeating myself to myself in my head. So I was just cleaning that brush with acetone. And I mean, it was doing me some good. So this is the really small detail brush that I was talking about. I went in with the white with this just to make sure I can get those little cloud looking circles, you know and yeah doing this for all the pieces that need to be white and then we'll get into the details
Now we on to the details. So I'm using this yellow to create the eyes. And I think you can see like the, yeah, you can see the um, pencil over or under the green. So that's very helpful. But I just went in to do the eyes and then I did, his eyes are usually yellow and red, but because the theme is pink, I went in with a deeper and darker pink instead of red because red was just going to completely throw it off and the same light pink i felt like was going to completely throw it off so we're going in with this deeper pink and just doing just a quick little dot you know and then that's basically all the color of detail we need so then we're going to go in with all the black detail and i'm using oh matter of fact let me explain it so i went in with a olive green polish and added a, like some olive green and a little acetone on my brush you don't want it to be too much paint because you only want a little bit for like the shading and the coloring so that's what i did just a darker green to go in with that and then i also use that to make like the little fur standing out and stuff i use a little bit of the olive green and a little bit of black to make the fur stand out just a little bit and then we're going in with the black um, acrylic paint, just going over the eyes. And then um, the pupils, we're going to go over, make it a bottom line right there, just like that. And then I added some lashes and did the little face, some little wrinkles and freckles on the face, um, you know, the mouth and stuff. Then did the outline of the face, the neck, and the little, you know, hats and little cloud pieces, all of that. It's not really that much to describe here. Just have a little bit on your brush. Do not overwhelm your brush because that's when a big chunk of black is going to end up on your painting. And it's going to look messed up. So you want to, even if you have to go back literally every stroke to get some more paint, that's good because you really do not want too much on your brush okay and continuously clean your brush as well and i'm gonna let y'all watch his face and then we're gonna get into the fingers
so then for the hand basically just doing the same thing going in with the outline but i did be a little bit more messy and create some like hairs sticking out for the hand because you know his hand is very hairy so that's that and then just went over the bow and you know the white and everything and i did actually go through again and use some acetone to clean up because like you see how i got that big chunk of black right there i went in and cleaned that up i didn't show that part because y'all get the point of really how it came out you know but that's what i mean by don't put too much on your brush because it's like oh let me put more so that i can get more painting done before i go back to put my brush in the black again but it's like no because that one piece that you started with is gonna have too much black and yeah so i just went in and drew some little furs and stuff to create that furry um look but i did go in with my acetone to clean it up because i did a little too much but yeah y'all get the point So for the plaid, I'm using this super long brush, which also comes in the um, art brush kit in my Amazon link. And I'm just taking my white and just going straight down. And um, you kind of you just have to be super steady when doing this. And using a longer brush does help because you get more done, if that makes sense. Instead of you know, and I'm cleaning up with my brush, like y'all see um but it's easier than using a smaller brush because you have to be more steady with a smaller brush brush and it takes longer just to like you know draw that whole line so yeah using the bigger brush using this little silver that um is already like a design polish you know whatever that is and then gonna go in with the pink too. I'm sorry, my head is in a way making it blurry, but y'all get the point. I'm gonna show the other hand how I did the plaid too, because y'all, so y'all can actually see it. Cause I did tell y'all on my community page that I was gonna get a plaid set for y'all, okay? And I actually have another plaid set coming for y'all too, more of a Burberry look. I got a video on that, which I'm gonna post for y'all. And we using this pink, the same pink that I used on the hat and the bow, whatever. And yeah, I'm gonna just let y'all watch the plays.
Then we going in with the sweater design. Y'all, it is so many different designs I did on this set that I have to explain to y'all. <laughs> but the sweater design, first we going in with a matte polish from Valentino. Cured that for 60 seconds. Then I'm going in with my gummy jelly from um, E Nail Couture, which I think is in the description box as well. And drawing the line in... The reason I'm using the gummy is because it's super, it's like way thicker, so it's going to stay in place instead of the top coat. Like the top coat is just going to smear and just get all over the place. But I did take some top top coat, the matte top coat, and pour it on the napkin and use that, what I'm doing here, and just going over the um, line I just drew a little bit because the gummy jelly does not cure on its own. So I do have to put a top coat over the gummy jelly in order for it to cure. So um, that's what I did. And then I just poured some of the acrylic powder over top and stuck that in there for 60 seconds. And I do like a little piece at a time just to make sure that it, because eventually the gummy jelly is going to smear as well. So you want to make sure that you do get it in to cure it as soon as possible, especially because I'm... Um, you know adding top coat on it the top coat was gonna smear all over the place so yeah just want to make sure i was curing it throughout the process that way it can actually stay in place and then when i put this one in the lamp and take the other one out i just brush it off with my little brush and then do the other you know little designs that i need to do for the sweater nail and then we gonna be on for the chrome So now we're on to the chrome and I'm using my e -Nail Couture top coat. I swear this is the best top coat for chrome. Like it is so amazing. And I just top coat the nail and I only leave it in the light for five seconds. That's really all I need. And then I'm using this opal chrome from um, my nail supply store actually. And just put it on my thumb and just rubbed it all over the nail. I feel like my thumb gives the best instead of using like the little like eyeshadow apply or whatever um my thumb just like really gets it on there and this top coat really gets it like in there too because when i use like the valentino top coat with this chrome it just would not come out good like this top coat is really just amazing with any chrome it even says on their website like they're number one for chrome so it's amazing um and then we get in with the diamond and the diamond um, this is probably my favorite part. So I'm using my Zule's Bling Adhesive and applying that. Then I'm just using these Swarovski um, shapes and just creating like a little star kind of thing. Which was ended up super cute. 
uh, I'm so happy with this set, but I'm so sad that Swarovski is stopping selling their stuff. Like, then we got to go to this Precocia, I think is how you pronounce it. I mean, they're good, but Swarovski is just still better. Like, why you have to do this like that? But it is what it is. Just doing it. And I did the same exact diamond design on both of the fingers. So I'm not going to show the other hand. And I did um, diamonds on the French tip nail as well. So I should have did the diamonds first before I did the sweater. Because, you know, you have to apply the top coat after the diamonds. So that you don't see that little, like, line of glue. So you ended up seeing the little line of glue. But it wasn't bad. Um, that's why I love Zule's bling because it's just like glue where you need it to be. Because if you used to watch me, if you were OG and used to watch me when I first started YouTube, I was using the um, gummy jelly from E Nail Couture, which I was using earlier for the sweater nails. And I would just use that just for the diamonds and it would come out so like bumpy and messy. So now I only use it when I'm doing a full um, diamond nail. But for diamond designs, I always use my Zulay's bling. And yeah, so we just doing this design and then the one on the pointer finger and then that's it. I think I actually did. No, I think that was it. And then yeah, we gonna see the final look. So for the top coat, I'm going in with my Valentino. Actually, what's going on? Okay, yeah, we're going in with the Valentino. And then for the Grinch face and finger, I went in with my um, CND top coat, which is my holy grail when it comes to nail art because I use regular polish. When you're using regular polish, the um, CND polish is amazing because it doesn't... Um, make the polish crinkle up underneath if you've ever had that problem you know what i'm talking about but yeah carrying that and then the top coat the c and d is actually a white top coat so when that comes out i just wipe it with my alcohol pad you can spray it with some alcohol too and wipe it down that way and then we going in to add my cuticle oil y'all And this is the finished look. These came out so cute. I'm so pressed over these. I'm so happy. I was able to do my Grinch, my yearly Grinch nails and I actually got to do them twice. I didn't record the other one, but I'll post a picture on my community if you guys want me to. But thank you guys for supporting and watching. I hope y'all love this set as much as I do. Follow me on Instagram at burn nails. I have it right here and I'll see y'all in the next video.